you know, I believe that, you know, we are in a time of uh, wilderness. We are in a time of wilderness. And I believe that, you know, uh, it is a call up. You know, uh, it is now a call of God, a wake-up call that we should rise in prayer in a time of wilderness. Hallelujah. You know, wilderness, if you are in the wilderness, yeah, the only thing you can overcome and bring the rains. You pray for the rains to come in your wilderness. Is to pray. That's the only thing that I have experienced. That even when I read other men of God, women of who have grown, who have done miracles, who have met with God, who have spoken to God, who have you know experience the power of God they will tell you that such time when you see that you know uh, things are not going I'm telling you you know lay down your plans lay down your efforts yeah just come and humble yourself just come and humble yourself and say God have your way. You know, God gave me this message this morning. I didn't have a message. I didn't have a message until I woke up uh, around 8. My message came at 8. Mm. My message came at eight. You know, I, last night I didn't feel well. I was weak. You know, my head was just going somewhere. <laughs> I said, it was I'm preaching. <laughs> you know, I wish that uh, the brother would be here. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, God is, is merciful. God is merciful. You know, uh, you know, God is love. God is love. Uh, I'm going to share with you today my message, the title of the message is How to Seek God in a brokenness of heart. How to seek God in a, your brokenness of heart. You see, if there's no brokenness, you can't touch God. My, my scripture, it starts from Jen, Jeremiah, 29 verse 11. It's a common scripture. And then as we come, we will be reading as the Spirit leads us. So open with me the book of Jeremiah 29 verse 11 to 12 and 14. From 11, 12 up to 14. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you are hungry, you are going to be filled. If you are hungry, say, God, I'm hungry. God, you know the word of God needs people who are hungry. Yeah, you are ready to listen and you are ready to move. Mm. So in verse 11, I'll start with verse 12. Says then you, you will call on me, 
and come and pray to me and I will listen to you you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart I will be found by you declares the Lord and I will bring you back from captivity you see when you seek <clears throat> and then in verse 11 says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and future amen we can start by prayer so that God the spirit of God will lead us father we thank you this morning thank you father for this wonderful time thank you father God for being here with us and teaching us talking to us we thank you father that you help us oh God to be able to listen and to be able to obey and do what you teach us in the name of Jesus father we know that we are living in the world that is corrupt without your word Lord we can never survive without your word oh God we are nothing we thank God that father you gave us your word Lord and you are still speaking to us from the beginning up to today you are speaking to us even up to the end we appreciate you so much we want to come against anything, Father, any stronghold, my God, that we want to disturb, that we want to steal the word. We bind it in Jesus' mighty name. Help us, O oh God, to release your knowledge and your wisdom unto your people this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. My title is How to Seek God in a Brokenness of Your Heart. <clears throat> you see, God wants you to call Him or to seek Him with all your righteousness, with all your surrendered heart. God is looking for people who, have, who can surrender their hearts to him. You see, surrender means, you know, uh, you give up everything. Like Paul says, you know, it's no longer I who live it, is it? Yeah. But Christ who lives in me. That means Paul is saying, Lord, I have no more will of my own. You can what? Talk to overdo what you want what it is your will in me you see that surrender God is looking for people who come in that attitude of surrender that you know you are coming to God and you want God to sort you out you want God to deal with you you have issues that you want God to deal with in your life. So you are coming to God and you are saying, God, have your way. Have your way. So this is why Jeremiah here says, you know, uh, in Jeremiah 33, verse 3 says, Call me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you have not seen before. You have never seen. There are things that you have never seen in your life. There are miracles surrounding your life that you have not seen. But when you come in humbleness, when you come with your own heart and cry to God and call him, he will show you 
great and mighty things that you don't even know. You don't even know. You see, you shall seek me and you shall find me. When you seek me with all your heart, you see what? Where we are failing, sometimes we say, hey, I've been praying and praying and praying. Nothing is moving. Nothing is, is happening. Nothing is changing. And if, sometimes our attitude of prayer towards God, you know, is wrong. Sometimes the way we pray, we want to pray the way we want. We come into in our terms. You see, then we want God to follow behind you. You know, you are going before God. You, are, you know, you, he must follow you. He, he must, you see, instead of letting God go before you. Mm. So the only way uh, to connect with God, the only way to touch God is by your tears, the tears of your heart. The tears of your When you find that the situation that you are in, it, 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 it's not, you know, applying. It's, it's not applying. All you do now, <laughs> because what makes you cry? What makes you cry? What makes your tears come out? Is when you yourself, you see yourself, you know, in a place where you say, Lord, I'm not worthy. Lord, I have sinned against you. Lord, forgive me. When you look at your sins, when you look at what you have done wrong before God, that's when you, your heart, eh? your heart gets humbled. Your heart gets humbled. Your tears will come out. Your tears will come out. The time you realize that I'm praying before God, He's the only one who can change my situation. It is God. God, if you are not going to do it, then I am nothing. You see, because you have to do it, Lord. You have to. It's like, you know, that Patimas was crying. He was crying so loud. The way he was crying, he wanted to alert Jesus that, he, you know, he's got an issue. Could, you know, people who cry, they have issues. Man. You don't cry when you don't have issue. When things are going all right, you don't cry. What for? But when God takes you into a wilderness, it may take you five years. Yeah? <laughs> it may take you ten years. Yeah. Twenty years. But God knows that as long as you are going to seek him at that time, you have a breakthrough. Because God knows you. He says, I know the plans I have for you. What is love? He has plans for you. He has plans for you and I. He has plans. You know, not your plans. Not your, I'm telling you, no, it's not about your plans. It's not about you think what to do. To think what you can do. What you can afford to do yourself. It's not that. that, that that's not the plan of God. God knows his plan in you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. It's only by total surrender. What causes a surrender? When you come to total surrender, do you know what it is? It's here in this verse here. Let me tell you. It's what Matthew. Matthew 17. Eh? 
Matthew 17. Matthew 17 will teach you how to get broken. Matthew 17, 21 will teach you how to get broken. There are people who are hard. Their hearts are hard. You don't even know what brokenness means. You know, you are just there like a stone. You come to God with your stone heart. You know, you come to God with your, you know, it's like, you know, where the, the, the scripture says, you know, we, we, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, not physical fights, but spiritual fights. You know, in verse 17, 21, Jesus said, Jesus said, let me, let me open it. Let me open it. If you put it there, you can read it. Who's got that map there? 1721? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. He says, because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have a faith like a small mustard seed, you know, you can say to this mountain, move. When you come to a place of surrender, a total surrender, it's when you start fasting and praying. When you do that, it's when God will give you the power to destroy that bondage in your life. God will give you, will enable you to give you power to destroy. You see, you can pray and pray and pray and pray. It's like you are praying to a rock. It's a rock. You know why? Even you yourself, you are still in the flesh. You are still in the flesh. When you start to fast, you break your body. You break everything. Your spirit gets broken. <laughs> you know, you are no longer yourself. That's the time. The power, the breakthrough comes. That's the secret. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a secret. Many people don't fast. They can't party with food. This is why they fail to have breakthroughs. You see? Because there is a secret there. You know, God wants you to sacrifice something. No sacrifice. God doesn't move. I'm telling you. Yeah. So, you need to Go to a sacrifice where you can sacrifice to say, okay, Lord, if I die with this fast, let me die. You see, God wants the attitude of your heart. He knows that your body may not take two days fasting, may not take two, but the attitude of your heart, you know, that's what God sees. Yes, that's 
what God says. Because you have surrendered inside you to say, only God, you, you can deal with this thing. You see? So once you do that, the devil will shake. The devil will shake. The devil will fear you. He told his disciples that, you know, you guys, you are wasting your time. You are wasting your time. If you see that it's not working, go into fast. Because that's when these things will what? You can control them. You know, praying and fasting breaks your heart and brings it into a surrender. Your mind, your flesh, every part of your body have no more control except to yield to God. That's all what you can do, just to yield to God. Church, I'm talking about this because I know that we as a church in Palm of Gilead, we are going into a great, I mean, a, a, a wilderness. We are in a wilderness, you know. Yes. So, you know, God is calling us to pray. God is calling us to pray. If we want the church to be successful and to move, we need to pray. I know God can raise one person to pray. I have seen this. One person, that's why God says, I'm looking for a man to stand in the... He didn't say, man, you know, he end, no. He says, man. Because if that man stands in the gap with all his heart and surrender, he will break the bondages. Hallelujah. This. You know, uh, he, Isaiah says in 58, let's go to Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. Verse 3. He says, uh, let's start from verse 3. Let's see. He says, why we fasted? They say, and you have not seen it. Why have we humbled ourselves? And you have not noticed. Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please. Hmm? And you exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife. And in, in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. You see, he says, is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people who humble themselves. It is only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in, in sackcloth ashes. Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord. Is not this kind of fasting I have chosen to lose chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, to settle the oppressed, free and break every yoke. 
Is it not the share of your food with angry and to provide the poor wanderers with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like a dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your real God. Then you will call and the Lord will answer you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the kind of fast that God is looking for. Most of the time we are in a fast during that fast, we are planning other things. During, we are cursing, we are quarreling, you know, but we are fasting. That's not the kind of fast that God is looking at. That kind of fast, you are wasting your time because it's not going to do anything. You see, sometimes you are stingy, you are not a giver. You see the poor, you don't help them. But you are fasting, you are busy. Lord, Lord, Lord. What are you fasting? <laughs> you see? So God is, is saying when you are fasting, hmm, you do all the right things. You do all the right things, you know. Because, you see, while you are there breaking and fasting, the love of God, it comes upon you. You see, I've noticed that, you know, when you fast and fast and fast, when you are really, really broken, 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 you find the tears. They are not a problem. They just run down like this. There are times when you can't even utter a word. You just groan and groan and groan and groan. You are there, you know, because, you know, that's the time that God can now come and what? Operate on you. You see, it's no longer flesh. There's no flesh there. You see, you are done. You, you are really done. Yeah. That's when the breakthrough comes. That's when chains are broken. Bondages are broken. That's when, you know, the, 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 the strongholds are brought down. You know, you start to uproot things. You know, that prayer, you know, it's not a joke. Even the demons, they can't come near you. Yes, they cannot come near you. This is the time when you shake things. You th shake things. This is what God is calling us to do. You see, when you, you, you come to a place, say, enough is enough, and I'm not going to tolerate this. I'm not going to tolerate this. It's enough. And you stand. Stand your ground. You stand your ground. Once you do that, you know, you can shake. You can shake your surroundings. You can shake your environment. You know, the, the atmosphere changes. Yeah, it changes. You are breaking things here. You see, prayer, it also goes with giving. It goes with giving. It, it is one thing when you are praying, you are giving. I'm praying for you. I'm giving myself. I'm giving my time to pray for you. I sacrifice to pray for you. You know, you can be praying for someone. This is the same thing that you do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When you can go on fast to just to pray for somebody, for somebody's issues, you see, God is looking for people who can stand in the gap. You see, you can't fast for yourself, but you can fast for others. Yes. While you are doing 
that. Hmm? Other things shall follow. He says, when you seek God with your righteousness, you know, he says, things what? The things maybe that you want, you know, they will follow you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I believe that God wants us to pray. God is taking us into prayer. A time of prayer. It's a season of prayer. We want to begin to see God move again once more. Yes. Once more. We want to go back to that, you know, uh, excitement, that time when we, when we were excited, when, when we were moving with fire, when we were carrying that presence of God, you know, excited. Yeah. Seeing demons cast out. When seeing people repenting, coming to the Lord, when we're baptizing again, this is the time, this is the season. God is calling us to start doing that. You see, the, when you see that the fire has, has died in your life, hmm? it is the time that you need to go to the first love. Because it is the love that brings that fire. That ignites that fire. It's the love of God. If the love of God is lost, it's no longer there, the fire is quenched. The fire is quenched. So you need to go back to that love. Go back. Go back. Go back. God is saying, return unto me. It's time to return to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you had that love, you were excited. But the love is gone. You are lukewarm. You don't know yourself whether you are cold or you are hot. You are in between. If you are in between, then it's not right. You go to be cold or either hot. There are people who are lukewarm. They are lukewarm. You know. They are lukewarm. The reason why there is no more love of God. This love of men. And Timothy said, there will be a time when people shall be lovers of themselves. Hallelujah. Yeah. You see, this is the time. People are concerned about their own things, not about God anymore. That love is lost. It's no more. But God is crying. He's saying, return to me. And I will return to you. You meet halfway. As he's coming, going towards him, he's also coming to meet you. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. When Nic Nic Nicholas, sorry, Cornelius, in Acts 10, verse 44, Cornelius stared at him. He was looking at him in fear and asked, What is it, Lord? What is it, Lord? He says, Your, your prayer, your giving, eh? your prayer, your giving is reached to my ears. Hmm. Eh? The prayer answered. Prayer answered. Why? This guy was giving the poor. He was, he was doing something in the community. But he was crying for his people to be saved. He was crying for his people. Then God says, yes, your prayers have prayed. And he called Peter. Go and meet Cornelius. 
He will tell you what to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The first church was planted. No, that was the second church. That was the second, the, the, the second keys that was given to Peter to start a ministry with the Gentiles. It was the time of Cornelius. When we pray, we can change things, church. When we pray, you know, he was praying in the will of God. He was praying in the will of God that people may be saved. He was in the will of God. And yet we others, we pray for other things and forget about coming to the will of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Prayer can break things. You know, let me tell you, there's a benefit in prayer. Prayer, it's not in vain. When you pray, you are not praying in vain. When you pray, I'm telling you, prayer will open doors for you. If they are shut, they are going to open. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is powerful. You need to pray the right attitude, the right heart, right motives, and go deeper. You see, when you are going deeper, you are now fasting and praying. That's going deeper. Once you go down there and you surrender, I'm telling you, after fasting and praying, you are not the same. You will never be the same. You find all you want to do is prayer. After that, all you, I'm telling you, all you want to do, you know, sometimes visitors can come. If you see that visitors are, are staying too long, they don't want to go. You'll be very, very worried because, you know, you're thinking, this time I should have been praying. I'm telling you. You, so, you, you become so addicted so addicted, it becomes automatic. You are no more suffering to battle, to what, you know, to, no. It's just the, your lifetime style. Yeah. It becomes your lifestyle. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I believe God is calling people. I believe God is calling people. You know, prayer also comes when you are provoked. When the situation around you you know, it's too much, you know. You get provoked into prayer. Yeah, God, do something. Do something, Lord, do something. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes you need to pray, you yourself. Sometimes we need to be laid hands on. Sometimes it doesn't work. God will be wanting you to open up and go deeper with him. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Prayer. Pray, my sister. Pray, my brother. Pray. Pray, 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 pray. Balm of Gilead is a place of healing. We have the healing as a minister, as a vision. But it needs a, a prayer back up. We are not going to see those miracles because there's no prayer back up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. You need men and women who stand, not shake it. Cold, come what, 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 what? They are there. Committed. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. 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 It is about the kingdom of God. 
It's not about us. It's not about our things that we do. But it is about the kingdom of God because Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. He came not to condemn the world, but that through him the world may be saved. That reason, that's the reason, that's the reason we are here, church. That's the reason we are created, church. You can represent Christ. You are a representative of Christ. You, I want you to know that honestly, wherever you are, you have to represent Jesus in your surroundings. Hallelujah. It's all about Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some of us, when we get that side there, we meet with people. Instead of us having that influence to draw them, we get drawn to them. We want to please them. We want to please our families. Hallelujah. We know that this is wrong. I'm not supposed to do this. But because you want to please your family, you get involved. Then now you come to compromise. Where is the gap? Where are you standing now? You can't stand in the gap for, for, for Christ, for, you know, for others. You are no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to stand, to stand and show yourself your strength in Christ. You must know this God. That's why they say that you know uh, there are times when children will separate with their mothers their, their parents because when you come hard your parents can deny you and say no 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 if you are not going to do this you are not my child then what are you going to do ah no I can't lose my parents is it? And yet when you stand there strong, they see your stability. You know, your integrity. They will come to you. They will sooner or later, they will come to say, no, my child is in the right place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, we need to pray where we can begin to see things. When we can begin to see visions. When we begin to see things. You know, church, we used to pray. There are times when we used to pray. You know, I, I wish I could go back there at that place. You know, I'm, I'm saying, God, let me go there take me back to that place. Yeah. You know, there's one time when we were in church, one woman started screaming, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I said, bring her here. The ashes brought her. Says what? He says, eh, they, they, they are piercing my tongue. What tongue? What? What? talking about he says yeah they said I must not denounce Jesus they will kill me <laughs> you know I said he says yeah eh, we are many of us we come into this church every evening Saturdays <laughs> yeah he says we anoint all these yeah, instruments what what we anoint them he says, that's our duty. Where do you come from? He says, Rose Camp. <laughs> you know, by the police camp. <laughs> he 
says here. Yeah. This is it says now. Right now they are piercing my tongue so that I must not talk. They said if I talk, I'm going to be killed. So we, we cast the, out that thing. She, she, she repented everything. I don't know what she did the following Monday. It was Sunday. following day. She was hit by a car. But she, she didn't die. She didn't die. There was not much uh, injury. So she came back. Because she compromised again when she got Yes, you see. So we told they said, no, no, no. When you confess these things, don't compromise again. There's nothing. They won't kill you. They are just scaring you. God has got more power. So this is when I realized that there are certain is to come to church. You see, to try and kill the presence of God. To try and, you know, sweep the, the, the people out. You see, I'm telling you the truth. That is real. I saw it. I saw it. So, this is why we need prayer. And prayer, because of prayer, it was exposing these things. If you don't pray, you won't see anything. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, church, we need to pray. We need to pray. Okay, in, in closing, in closing, in closing, in closing. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to Jesus, glory to Jesus, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You know, I know that <clears throat> maybe you are going through issues. You are going in the wilderness. And I believe that this is the time that you should take a step. Take a step of faith. Take a step of faith. Find yourself time to be with God alone so that you cry out to God. Say, God, I want intimacy. I want intimacy with you. I want intimacy with you. Take a day. First two days, first one day, two days, three days. You can continue as you know. Uh, the spirit leads. And I believe that your breakthrough is coming. You know, the breakthrough is surrounded. The miracle. Fasting. And prayer surrounds your miracle. and praying it surrounds your miracle if you are not going to break through your miracle will not come each one of us have a miracle that surrounds us how do you get there how do we touch that miracle how are we going to get to that miracle Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Hallelujah. Sacrifice. You must sacrifice. Look at that man. He was 38 years coming to the pool. Coming to the pool. Jesus asked him, but what's wrong? He says, no. I'm looking for a man to carry me. Is it? So his faith was looking for someone. He had faith that one day somebody will come and carry him. Hallelujah. Yes, somebody. You know, he, he didn't worry about the years, how many years he spent. You know, he kept coming. He kept coming until he found a man who said, hey, take your bags. Go home. He met that man who said, can you imagine if he had stayed at home and gave up, he was going to remain a crippled man. 
Yes. There are some people that you are sitting there crippled. Crippled. God is calling you. Jesus is passing by. Jesus is here right now. He's saying, hey, get up. Get up. It's time to walk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. It's time to, to get up and do something. It's time. You know, once you start walking, you are active. You start doing something. Your joy will come. You are sitting there sad, disappointed. God is saying, Arise. Arise. Arise and walk. The joy is coming for you. Blessings is coming for you. You need to do something. There is nothing for nothing. Even in the kingdom of God, there is nothing for nothing. Jesus has to die. He has to pay for you. To get you to his kingdom. He has to pay with his own blood. Sacrificed. Sacrifice. It's about sacrifice. You do something, then, then you trigger the blessing, the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Tell yourself that from now on, I'm going to pray and sacrifice two hours, one hour, one hour, two hours every day. Then you see that one day, one morning, it's going to dawn. It's beginning to see things. Say, wow. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. I believe that God is talking to you. But God is saying, do something. If you are going to say, amen, amen, amen. And it ends there with, amen, amen, amen. You haven't done anything. And you are going to sit there 38 years. Maybe more. Maybe more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus.